Hello and welcome to TU Dublin Talks, episode four. My name is Daniel Donovan and joining me today are two of our men's soccer elite scholarship students, Colin McCabe and Daniel McKenna. Lads, thanks very much for joining us. Um, if you could just introduce yourselves to everyone that's listening so they know who's who. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm Colin McCabe, uh, accountant and finance student, 23, and currently a goalkeeper for the men's first team and Shelburne FC as well. Uh, I'm Daniel McKenna, 20, fourth year accountant and finance student. I don't know if Colin knows I chose that course because he's doing it as well. So, <laughs> um, playing with Shelburne as well. And, um, I've been been across to England, so from, I'm back playing with Shells for the last two years now. Very good. So um, Shells obviously being the current thing is what we will talk about in a bit, but we want to kind of start at the start. Um, like you'd mentioned there, you've, you've played in England and Collie yourself, you've played in Scotland, so two years have played professionally abroad. Um, it's part of the reason we're obviously bringing you on today is have a very similar but different stories have gone kind of the same route, but in different areas, different teams, stuff like that. And obviously you've your paths have crossed now with shells and in studying in Blanche. But can you just take us very quickly? So obviously you've went abroad, Colly you played for Scotland. I played in Scotland with Celtic and we're on loan with is it Stenhouse Muir FC? How do you say that? Get that Stenhouse one for me. Muir. Stenhouse Muir, yeah, not bad. Yeah, and then Dan obviously you were playing with Wolves over in England. So just Colly, I'll start off with yourself. Just briefly how you went then from Obviously, yeah, from Cavan, growing up in Cavan, playing ball. How did you end up over playing for Celtic? Um, I think I always look back on it and I'm, I'm being quite a lucky kid, someone who got a got a break. So um, I only started playing when I was about 11 or 12, became a goalkeeper straight away, uh, played Kennedy Cup, played three games out of six there, got spotted, um, played the Hibernia Cup in Dublin straight after the Kennedy Cup with Celtic. And I kind of, I guess from there, it just kind of snowballed trial after trial. Um, I knew at 15 I'd be leaving at 16 to go abroad so um, it all pretty happened pretty quickly um, and I suppose I just took it in my stride, didn't really know what to do, not many people from Calvin really get the opportunity mm. to, to kind of go across on trial or, so it, it was new to my family, new to me um, and I suppose it's probably something I will always look back on as a, as a fond memory um, and like I said I think I was just lucky and someone who got a break in the end to be honest. Yeah, certainly starting at 11 or 12, that is quite late, but you must have obviously played something, being from Cavan, probably Gar playing beforehand, was it? Yeah, I, I would have played um, Gaelic and would have played that since I suppose five or six, um, mm. and I would have played out the field. So it would have kind of made me decent, maybe high balls and catch and use my hands and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I suppose that probably stood to me when I went in goals and in, in soccer, as I like to call it. And uh, uh, from there, I suppose... Like I said, I always had the height, so I think the height kind of worked in my favour. Um, from there, I was trying to catch up on trying to make my feet better or, you know, mm. trying to become a better goalkeeper in, in the soccer terms. And um, I'm lucky to all the coaching I did get. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Still, still trying to catch up. But no, it was good, like, you know what I mean? And, and I, I'm, I'm grateful for my GA background that kind of stood to me. Um, and I suppose the physical, physical environment of the GA stood to me as well when I, when I did, did start playing soccer as well and taking crosses and all the rest of it, so... Yeah, good. I suppose friend that doesn't know Colin is six foot six. Am I right? Yeah, six foot six. Yeah. So obviously a, a resident big man, um, which makes it a bit easier, kind of as you said, coming for high balls and stuff like that. Um, we'll switch over to you, Dan. Obviously, you said you played for Wolves. Um, just talk us through your skill by football and how you got across the water. I, I think I'm a bit different to Colin. I've, I've been playing football for as long as I remember. Like, um, I was down with Belvedere. I think since the age of four, had a, had a school teacher, um, in Brunner who was a coach down there and he was just getting a lot a few lads get down to um Larkin College for the trials and stuff like that. So I headed down there and half of the school headed down like and mm. loved it down there. It was close to home, like I was living in Greek Street at the time, so it was, it was probably the closest club to me. And um I've been playing there since I was I was four right up until I left to, to go to England. So I was playing with my own team, my brother's team there was two ages above me and mm. the, the year above me as well. So, um, but I probably started going to places when I was was twelve, thirteen, fourteen, out to England, like so. Um, Where would you have went? I think the first club I went to was United. So, um, it was it was a starting big. big. <laughs> yeah, it was a big one to start off with, like, um, and then like I think all all, all in all, I've, I've been to twelve or thirteen different clubs, like so. Um, 
I've been to, you know, you know, in Arsenal. Arsenal was probably one of my favourite, you know, that's the team was important and stuff like that. So mm. it, was, uh, it was a great experience driving around with Liam Brady for the day. Got to meet um, Ramsey, a few lads who are, they actually had a Champions League away game when I was over there. So it's just the injured boys that were left back in the training ground. So but I got to do a one on one session with Liam Brady and, you know, stuff like that just sticks with you. And yeah, that's class. Yeah, but it wasn't until like, I, I, was, I was probably in one when I was 13, 14, and then. Um, after the Galway Cup, I think that's 16 maybe, that was the, the second or third time that I had went back over, like, mm. um, I think plans were to sign for Everton, and then that didn't that didn't happen, so I had went back over to Wolves again, and I was just like, straight away, this is, this is the club for me, like, and, and mm. I think I was over there, I had some food, and done, done a training session, and I was like, yeah, like, this is, this is it, um, and then I think I went back over two weeks later and signed up with them, so. I knew it like, exactly like Holly when I was 15, I, I'd be moving over at 16, like, so, um, mm. it was a good process, like, I think as a kid, you know, I'm in sixth class, and I'm getting off on a tour of state to, to come to England to, <laughs> to train with these teams, you know, probably missing the tests on a Friday or something, so, um, I did miss a lot of school days, but, you know, the skills and the teachers and the family, everyone was so accommodating to that, so, um, it was a great experience as a kid, you know, that's the stuff, that's the stuff you dream of, so. Yeah, definitely. All, it's all we all want. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a great experience. Everything was. So. As I saying, 16, obviously, that's very young. Obviously, if you're making those sorts of decisions, you probably wouldn't have obviously had full autonomy over that. Your parents and all would have had a big part to play. Um, what, like, obviously, what was the... Not when you've made the decision then, like, for Colin, it's like, you, you're talking to your parents, like, right, Celtic is the right place so for yourself, Dan, saying it's Wolves. Like, um, how important were your parents in that kind of decision-making transition to go across and deciding to let their, their young son leave the country to go play football somewhere else? Um, well, I think for me, I can always remember the day when my parents got the phone call and they sat me down and they're like, look, we're after getting this phone call. We want to know what you think about it. And my first reaction was, well, I want to go. Like, there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to stay and do my leaving circuit or whatever. So I think my parents... Where maybe maybe my dad was living his dream through me so mm. my dad was first of all quite willing to allow me to go and and uh, quite supportive i suppose of, of really me leaving the house and being the youngest in the family and the first to leave the house and go away but they obviously knew it was going to be a big challenge but you know they they were supporting me they came across about two or three times a month at the start and then after that it kind of you know maybe twice a month and stuff so for the first year it didn't really feel like you're away from home because mm. you're always always on the phone to them. You're always FaceTiming them and they're always flying over nearly every second weekend or for your game and stuff. So um, I think it was quite easy for me to make the decision to go. Like I said, you know, not many pe people from Cavan get the opportunity. So it, yeah. was something, it was something I jumped at straight away. To be I honest. suppose even being Celtic as well, having a lot of ties to Ireland and a lot of Irish fans would be Celtic fans. It probably entices you a little bit more as well. Yeah, I think the changing room, like one of the things I noticed on, when you, you go on trial is you notice the change room you're going to be spending every day. And so I think at the time there could have been six lads between the 17s and 19s at Celtic that were Irish. And, mm. You know, that helps it straight away. Once you, mm. if, if I was the only Irish there, you know, you might have been going maybe, I'm not so sure. But the yeah. fact you ha they, they become your family, like they become your brothers. So um, that also made it, to be honest, it's quite easy to, to, to settle in at the start. What about yourself, Dan, making a decision to go across the water away from family and stuff? Um, I suppose I was a little bit different in the sense that I was lucky enough to have some options and um, I've been to a lot of places. So um, my man was very like, look, I know you're young, but at the end of the day, you've been to these places and you've got the feel for, like Holly said, the dressing rooms and like only you know where is best going to suit you football wise. Mm. Obviously, she, like she doesn't play the football, so she doesn't know where it's going to. She she can um, advise as much as possible, like um, and that's what I had a good friend Shane Supple as well, who who uh, along with my mum advised very well. But at the end of the day, left the decision down to me. So um, they they were good in that sense. But it is a big decision you have to make when you're when you're such a young kid, and um, you have to factor everything in, like opportunities, you know, like friendships and stuff like that mm. at the end of the day you're gonna you're going over there as a 15 16 year old so you want it to be as easy as possible for you so as Colin mm. said you know having having some Irish connections there and at Wolves there was a lot of Irish lads as well so who would still talk to nowadays so um it's good to have that that connection with them lads so the, the decision to go to Wolves like it wasn't 
was a hard one mm. for me. It was just luck, got the junior shirt done, and then then you can go like so. Um, that was it. I wasn't even thinking of leaving or anything like that. So. Yeah, and um, where were Wolves at that time? Because that would have been what twenty, twenty, maybe twenty sixteen, twenty yeah, twenty sixteen, twenty fifteen. I think they were, the championship. It was before mm. <clears throat> before the new owners and stuff had come in. I think they had just finished mid table in the championship um, the year that I signed, and then the next year. Uh, a little bit above that, and then the new owners came in. Mm. Right yeah, and look so, at them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. So, um, talk to us about so, like we said, living abroad and stuff. Um, did you live in digs, or what way did that work out? I'll start to you, Collie. Yeah, so I went into a house um, where I had two wires at the time. So um, it was grand. Um, the house was grand. Like they've they've been doing it for years, so they kind of knew what the story was. They knew that you're going to be you know, not maybe upset at the start, but you'd be missing home and stuff. So mm. they're quite confident. Um, and the lads were, were supportive. Like, and I mean, like I said, they, they did become like brothers. You're in their room, you know, that made it easier. You're always going out, maybe if you're passing time by playing poo, playing golf, going to the cinema, going to the shops, you know, mm. going for food, whatever it was. I think the house really plays a big part. And um, the people in the digs, I'd still be in contact with them now. You know, they're, yes. like, your, they're like your second mom. Like, you know, I spent maybe four years in the house. So, and especially at that age, they understand a lot. So, um, and again, like the two lads, especially one of the lads anyway, he, he'd be like a brother to me. So I'd still stay in close contact with, with both the Diggs owners and, and the people in the house as well. Yeah, just for people that don't know what Diggs are, like it's a, like a house to go over and live in while you're like part of the club, if it's Celtic or Wolves or whoever. Um, just for anyone like, to know what they are. Um, what about yourself, Dan, with you and Diggs over there? Yeah, I'm the exact same as Kyle. Like, I'm still in contact with my Diggs people. And uh, when I first moved over, it was... Uh, one Irish lad in there and two English lads. Usually they only take the Irish lads in uh, in the house in my house. Um, and I think they were three to three of them were older than me. So when they saw it moved on and went their own way, like it was me then. I was the oldest oldest lad in the house, and, mm. and two three younger Irish lads came in with me. So um, I saw I had the role to play. That you're the big lads, brother then. Yeah, that them lads <laughs> played. I was sitting at the top of the table. Then. <laughs> But yeah, like Ali said, I'm still in, I'm still in contact with um, my big people, so I always send them WhatsApp videos and stuff like that, and um, keeping close contact with them. Like mm. we man had our had our birthday party there uh, a few months ago, and they came over, flew over for that. So um, it's just nice, it's just connections that you build with people, mm. and they just last forever. Like um, yeah, it is. It's, it's lovely to hear about because obviously yeah. we anyone that's been involved in sport in general or football, like in team sports and you know like what it's like to build up relations with people and how powerful sport can be but the fact yeah. that it's people from different countries and you're still in contact and you still get to see each other that's great um want to move on just a little bit so sticking with the whole digs thing obviously you're living abroad and i know it's like you're having a family but do you have to kind of do you have to grow up a bit like you're, you're just gone 16 years of age you're living in scotland or you're living in uh, england do you just have to do a bit of growing up um uh, a funny Carly story. still has a lot of ground up to do, but you know what I'm on. I had, I had I'll never grow up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funny stories I have about growing up was uh, I think I was in full time training, so I'd moved over in, in the January at the turn of the year, um, and it could be like February time or something, and we're doing training um, on the pitch, and I'm still thinking about my calf and training, like you know what I mean. We're not really listening to your coach or whatever, like you know what I mean. And uh, the coach was the coach was. Um, at Celtic now was speaking at the time he was he called us in we were doing tactical talk about whatever could have been a game we, we had coming up and a plane flew overhead and instead of me listening to the coach I just looked up like and I was in direct line with the coach so I just looked up and looked at the plane and my coach um, stopped what he was saying and he goes Colin that's a lovely plane isn't it <laughs> and I goes I goes yeah it's not bad and he goes well look if you don't grow up son you're not at home anymore I'll send you on a plane home and you can stay at home so <laughs> I, I quickly realised that, you know, you had to grow up and you had to be a man and, and whatever, mm. you know, if a coach was having a pop at you, it wasn't, you know, direct as such. It mm. was just to it's not make you, Yeah, it's to make you a better player. So I quickly found that the step at 16, you, you weren't a boy anymore. You were treated as a man. And, um, you know, it was nice in the house where you didn't have to grow up as much. You could still run around and do your own things. But mm. once you turned into into training, I remembered that it wasn't training. It was it was work, basically. Yeah. So. So you did become a man um, quite, pretty, uh, quite straight away, mm, to be honest. I think it's fair to say that stuck with you because of being, like, obviously, people take it to the Blanche dressing room. Like, 
not even just age, but like experience wise, like you'd be obviously one of our senior pros in the team and would be very like kind of in training, demanding standards and stuff like that. So I'd say that's probably obviously where you're picking those things up from early on. Absolutely. Like they're, they're little things that you learned from, from day one. And you know what I mean? You had to bring them with you every day. And they were always kind of looking at your your attitude or your, you know, whatever mood you're in. Like, you know what I mean? Never mind mm. just your training. They're always looking for, I suppose, them clubs are investing money in you. So they're looking just for, you know, not just for an athlete, but they're looking for a person on and off the field. And mm. they're, pro they're probably things I've, you know, like Dan, he's learned things, life attributes that you're going to bring on for the rest of your life. And, you know, that's why you, ha you have to kind of pick up these things along the way. Yeah. And what about you, Dan? What's grown up to do? What was the Diggs family yeah, like with that? Yeah. Well, as I said, when I moved over, like I was the youngest in the house, so I could still be a little bit childish or immature, but, mm. I, but I've always been, I've always been mature. Like, um, but I'd say it wasn't until I came back on loan to Bray at about 18, 19. Um, mm. I, I've been playing 18s football for two years, I think, at that stage. And coach was sort of saying to me, look, you've, you've grew out of it, so you need to either get yourself into the 23s team or get yourself out on loan. So, um, mm. so I came back on, on loan to Bray and I got a season, half a season, sorry, in, in the top division here. So I think that stood to me and when I went, had went back over to England yeah. then. Um, my digs lady and, and everyone was just they could see how much I had matured from that and um, took the experiences from that and implemented it then in, in my life when I moved back over. Uh, I think I had the option to move out of the house at that stage. Um, I would have been 19 at that stage, but I just wanted to stay there. You know, it's still very there. young though. Like yeah, you wouldn't yeah. like if you're still if you're living at home at 19, you're not really thinking about yeah, moving out. So that's what like, but shit, that's what um, I would have been. I would have came on so much that when she was like, look, you can move. You're ready, now. like. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, I'm loving it here. So mm. there's no, no even point in me moving out, you know. Um, and I was sort of thinking ahead to the future as well. Like, you move out, you're paying, I think it's almost 750 a week. And I'm like, nice, like tight what, with happened, the money. What, <laughs> <laughs> what happens if, if a year down the line, which did happen, um, a year down the line, you know, you're not there or you're not, you're not earning that money to... Going to stay, yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, it's the same Smart when, I was, thinking. when I was buying my first car as well. It was just like, do I want the lease or do I want to buy it? And you know, in my head, I'm like, do I want the lease or the lease? Yes, yeah, do I, I want, want the micro or do I want the merc? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> am, am, am I gonna be there or what's me, what's me finance gonna be now in, in the next six months or 18 months when I still have another year or two years left to pay off the car? With the yeah, car so it was just decisions that you had to make there on the spot, and I think that's what showed the maturity uh, levels that I had come on, you know, from the long move, I would say anyway, because when I moved back, it was like, um, everyone's in work, I'm not in work, I'm not trying for my time with Bray, so I had so much spare time to myself um, during the day, you know, all, all my friends are in work or in college or whatever, mm -hmm. and you're sitting at home and you just need to make the most of that time, so I'd say that that really benefited me. Yeah, uh, speaking of loans, obviously we mentioned at the start that you went on loan, then Collie as well, at what point then was that? Like how long into your kind of your cell time at Celtic had you been moved out on loan? Um, I think I was just gone eighteen, and uh, I remember there was a game on a on a Friday, and this was for the Celtic reserves or twenty trees. It was it's kind of the same thing, mm. um, and I didn't play, and I was kind of thinking to myself, why didn't I play? Because I kind of been playing the last couple of games before that, and the goalkeeping coach pulled me in the warm up, and he's like, look, I got a phone call today, a team needs a goalkeeper tomorrow, um. I've thrown your name in there. I want to see what happens, so I don't want to play it today. So mm. over the next couple of hours, I got a phone call saying I was going on unknown to a team called Saint House Muir. Didn't and did you know, did, yeah, now nothing about them. Like no, no, literally knew nothing about them. Um, didn't even know where it was in Scotland. Didn't even know what league it was. So it was League One at the time. Mm. Um, and I think there were like there was ten divisions or ten teams in the division. They were something like eighth, and they were playing uh, the team who was first. So I was kind of like, Jesus, a baptism of fire here. I'm going to get peppered. Probably. <laughs> so uh, I went in, met the manager before the game, and he says, look, there's no pressure on you. You don't know any of the players. Just go and do what you do. You're blah, 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 coming from Celtic, so you're going to be all right. You're going to, it'll be okay for you. So um, Five nil. we got beat. We actually got beat something like 4 nil. I got, I got mad. <laughs> I got man the match, something like seven saves. What? It could have been, oh, it could have no, been about, it could have been about ten nil or something. And then the manager, the manager was like, uh, "Look, at like you know, you've done very well today. It wouldn't have been easy for your first men's game." And a bit like that, I kind of knew from then that um, it was an emergency loan. It was only for a month because all yeah. our keepers got had got injured. 
So it was four. It was four months. So I had three games, but I knew from then that I didn't want to go back and play mm-hmm. reserves for Celtic. I knew that I wanted to play the, the two next games and hopefully extend it till the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what happens. So I was kind of. It came out. Of the, it came out of the blue. I didn't know nothing about it. Didn't know nothing about the team. But it was to be fair, it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because I think that kind of at that stage maybe maybe another step up in, in maturing and and maybe when you go to these pitches or stadiums or whatever, they're not as good as Celtic or the facilities mm. elsewhere. So again, you're kind of learning a bit more about yourself and and bringing that to the pitch as well. Yeah. Um. Obviously, like the stats on people that go over and stay over, it's something mad. It's like ninety five percent of people do come home. Um, but obviously, like it takes a lot. I know you are only sixteen and whatever, but like to be noticed, there's so many players in Ireland, there's so many leagues, so many teams that like it obviously is obviously something to be very proud of. Um, obviously, you spent a couple of years over there. What would you say if you had one thing to pick would be your highlight of your time in Scotland or in England? I'll we'll start with you, Collie. Um, to pick one highlight, Jesus, I don't know. Um. I, I suppose it's probably the friends and the people that you meet along the way because I personally probably wouldn't have spent five years over there if I didn't enjoy it. And what made me enjoy it was the people, the environment, the city. Um, you know, if, if I went over in the first six months and hated the managers, hated the teammates, mm. hated everything about it, I wouldn't have lasted at all. I would have came home. But I never had that homesickness at all in five years. So yeah. I'd have to say the teammates, the players, the people you meet, you know, mm. the kit, the kit men, all people like that, they're, they're, they all play a massive part in, in helping you grow up as a man. Mm. And, um, so not the cup final win against Rangers in Celtic Park, no? Well, that was nice. <laughs> if, uh, listen, that was my only ever time playing at Celtic Park in front of, what, 12,000 at 17 years of age. So um, it wasn't bad, but I think that change and that age group was, was quite good as well. And then what about you, Dan? Your highlight of being with Wolves? Yeah, it's similar, like the connections that you build and stuff like that and getting to play in, in these Premier League stadiums that you see on the telly and stuff like that um, at such a young age or you're walking out onto the pitch. Although there's no one in the seats, <laughs> you're still getting to walk out and you're like, jeez, I've only seen this on the telly there on Saturday or Sunday or whatever. Like, mm. um, And for me as well, I'd say like the international exposure, like the games and stuff and the connections that I've built with the people from the international teams Mm. I got up through to 19s, like so, and the trips were always very enjoyable and stuff like that. So they would have been probably my best best memories of, of playing football. So yeah, and you've mentioned it there, and it's funny, it's about what I was about to go on to next is um, representing Ireland. Obviously, you both have a underage level. Like I know you've Dan, you've captained Ireland for a number of years on your way up um, at underage. Just talk me through the first call up. When was it like and um, what was that experience like? Um, I know I done emerging talent stuff like that, so um, I don't know if you had that, like, that down in Cavan. <laughs> just about, ta- just about. <laughs> uh, we we had them programs and stuff like that, so that's that's sort of like the build up to to the force selection. That's where I think they picked their their force pool of players from, or else the Hibernia Cup or something like that. Um, but I know our first away trip international game was over in Holland against Holland. So, um, and that that was just unbelievable. I think we had a couple of days training over here in Ireland, stayed at the Malgen Hotel at the airport, then flew out to the Netherlands. Like, and um, it's unbelievable. Like the lads that we have, I remember playing against that day, are, are the likes of Justin Kluivert and just lad Che Che Che. He, I don't know, I think he's with Ajax, uh, Tai Chong off United, like, just lads like that, mm. and it's like, it's crazy that you've played against these people, yeah. where they are now and stuff like that, so, um, that first game was just unbelievable, and then being the captain as well for that trip was, you know, just amazing, yeah. And what about you, Collier, first cap? Um, I think it was Italy, I was trying to think there when Dan was mentioning all his games, I was like, <laughs> um, no, I think it was Italy, we, we, I think it could have been under 17s, um, maybe a, a, Euro, a Euro qualifier or something like that. We were out in Italy, but I'll never forget it. And then I kind of went on a little run from there. If I'm honest, under 15s, under 16s, kind of early under 17s, didn't really get a sniff. Uh, James was, James had the jersey and he had the captain's armband. James Talbot, but, is it? Yeah. So yeah, it was That's a current Bowes keeper at the minute, keeping Collie out. Exactly. <laughs> and he was training with the senior team last year. So, you know, I was in good competition. Um, and then I kind of ran under 17s, under 18s, 19s. I, I kind of felt like I started to, 
get more confident and hold my own against them. And uh, mm. it was kind of, it was kind of flip of a coin really between the two of us. But I think the first game I got was under seventeen. So, um, you know, at that stage, you you kind of had the little, you know, the nice nicey kind of football underage international football was gone. It was kind of kind of serious. There was the Euro mm. qualifiers and all that. So if you made a mistake or you know you're a bit of nervous. It, you couldn't be really because it was, mm. it was big. It was big football. It was big competition. Yeah, um, obviously, like all the people that would play football, like would most would never get even a sniff near like an international cap, like a real cap. Um, so it just shows how obviously how good he's were and obviously still are. But to be like being called up into those sort of games, like Euro qualifiers, captain in Ireland and stuff like that, um, it's really really good. So. We've kind of gone over like your careers to date and stuff. So I just wanted to go about then you're you're coming home because you're coming back from Celtic, you're coming back from Wolves. Obviously, you have done great things over there. You've won cups, like you've done. You we played into into the under twenty three Premier League two stuff like that. Like it's it's unreal. But then you're coming home and like you know you're coming home for good this time and it's it's not going to work out over there. Was there ever a feeling of failure in inside your own head? Did you ever feel like I, I failed? Um, I think yeah. I think listen. I, I kind of have to be like. I think if you, you know, the biggest thing for me was I was let, I let my family down. Like you know, um, because nobody wants to come home. Like we we know the sacks. You know what I mean? It, it's sometimes mm. a new contract is based on well, who am I going to pick? Is it going to be Dan or is it going to be a player very similar? And sometimes that's what it comes down to. It doesn't come down to things you control. It, it sometimes it's out of your control. And mm. you know, when you do know you're packing your bags and you're coming home, obviously your family's always going to be there for you. But of course there is that element that you've let yourself down. You have let your family down. And and for me personally, I, I was coming home not knowing what to do. Like my fa- I think most of my friends were just in final year in college, kind of graduating. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to try and pursue football full time? Am I going to go to do my leaving set? Am I going to try and get into college? And, you know, you, for me personally, I was at a crossroads and, and without the support of my family, I I probably would have been, them decisions would have been a lot, lot harder. Mm. Would you still look at it now? Looking back on, obviously, you have a lot more years on you and experience and stuff. Would you still look at it as failure? No, I, you know, you, listen, you learned a lot. And I always said, mm. I was always grateful for the opportunity. But, you know, the athlete or the, professional person I am would probably say that there is an element of failure you know it's a chapter that is closed and you wouldn't like mm. it to be closed you'd like it to be still open and and you know I'd like to be over there playing in front of 60,000 or you know what I mean but at the end of the day I'm not I've got to move on I've got to accept it that I'm now not and that chapter has closed and and look at you know I've got to try and set new challenges for myself as well. Yeah and then what about yourself Dan how, how old were you when you come back then you said you're I'm down to Bray at 18, so... Yeah, um, I would have been just gone 20. No, 19, just gone 19. After I'd sort of, like, when I had, had finished along with Bray, I went back over, um, and I wasn't getting into the 23s team, so I tried to go out on loan over there to Telford. wasn't playing there. And then, I think it was around the, uh, around the November time, I was like, right, it's, it's time for me to, to go home. Mm. I had to, had a couple of months left on my contract. It wasn't up until the summer, but there's just no point in me sitting around until the summer, you know, not playing. Um, so I was just going every in every day, training, coming home, you know, trying to be trying to keep the spirits up and stuff like that, trying to be as professional as possible. But yeah, just come come to January, I wanted to get out of there. Like um, I had been in touch with Ian, and I knew it was it was it was there for me to come back and play with Shell. So mm. that was something I was I was very interested in. Like I didn't. I didn't even think about staying over there to be honest. Um, I had a lot of good, a lot of good support from my family as well. Like Holly, I had my girlfriend and stuff like that. And mm. It was just for me. It was just trying to come back and get get straight back into education. Like, um, yeah. But I think it, it was sort. It was a little bit of a feeling of embarrassment. Like you go over with this expectation on your shoulders. Maybe not from yourself, but from a lot of other people. You know. Yeah, like, they are gonna make it. Like. Yeah, you, you've you've been to probably these clubs since you're fourteen, fourteen. It's like. Geez, he, has, he has a great chance now, and mm. you, you don't fulfil that. And it's like, but once you get over the the thing of how how are people looking at me, how are people t- like, you just don't care. You, you want to come back, you just want to do what's best for you, set new challenges for yourself. Like, um, for me, it was just get back playing as much football as mm. possible, get the confidence levels back up, and just get back to to the levels I was at that got me over to there to England yeah. so um, and just get back into education like that was that was the one thing I wanted to do because 
Um, I was a clever kid and, you know, I left after the junior cert and um, you're, over, you're over there and, and you just don't, you don't really think about education. It's just mm. football, football, football. So um, when, it, when it was like coming back, it was just like straight, right straight into education. I did yeah. so, social science course in DBS and um, thought that would have got me something in the September time to, to get into college, like, but it wasn't the case and I was going to have to do like a year PLC or whatever, but yeah, for, for a play to Jamie and um, Jamie Moore got me got me into plans. So yeah, yeah. pulled a few strings. Yeah, he pulled a few strings. Yeah, got me in, so fair play. But that's it. It's not what you know. It's here you know, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but it's good. Like that, you do say like that. You obviously have value the experience you had, and you can see that you've brought a lot of stuff back with you. Just like professionalism and stuff like that, and does the, like still have the desire to play. I think like that shows more the character of the two years than anything else. That you didn't just like you can see a lot of people come home and. Some people go on the beer, they they fall away from the sport altogether and like you see the people talking to God, remember that fella, he was gonna be something and now he's not doing anything with himself in the sport anymore. But it's good obviously like the years to come home and like I know it's obviously we are eighteen, like nineteen, twenty years of age coming home thinking, uh of, like throwing it away now, like uh, feeling like they're saying embarrassed or feeling like you let a family down. But like honest like really you haven't like it's such a mm-hmm. You know, now looking back on it, like hindsight is, they say it's a wonderful thing that yeah. it's so hard to really make it over there. And you see how, like, players who probably even have, were better than yourselves or that are, like, older and better players that still didn't make the cut and that it is just so hard. Um, but, like, like I said, we've come home now. Collie, you went then and signed for Bowes. Yep. Um, and Dan, you went, you, you mentioned Ian. So, Ian is Ian Morris, that'd be the, the Shelbourne manager now. Um, at the time, though, Collie, when you would have signed for Bowes, Ian was still playing. Whip yeah. wasn't he? So he's yeah, a player yeah. then before obviously he retired and taken up the shells job. But just how did you how did you get involved then with balls? You've come back. So um the summer, just a few a few months previous, I came home and wanted to stay a fit, so I made a few phone calls. I, to be honest, I didn't know anybody in the League of Ireland, so mm. it was more through friends and who I knew and who they knew got me into Bose to keep fit over the summer, went back over to the UK and nothing happened. So then came back home, got a phone call off Trevor Crawley. Uh, the assistant manager and said, "Look, we need a goalkeeper till the end of the season. Will you? Are you interested?" Said, "Yeah," um, and then kind of went from there. Went on a, another season with them, played a bit more in the second season, um, and then I kind of knew that I wasn't really going to get anywhere with with Shane Supple in front of me. So, yeah, uh, League of Ireland legend, <laughs> League of Ireland legend, another guy who trained with Ireland. So I'm. Uh, been quite stuck unlucky. in that department. Yeah, yeah, in that the department. best number two in the world. <laughs> exactly, the best number two. That's me. So um, yeah, and then look at the opportunity came about. Um, obviously, how football does. You move on. Um, obviously, Ian finished up, got the job to Shells, and and rang me, and said, "Look, will you come to Shells and and be another number two for the first season?" So, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't no, last so, too long. To no, just number one fairly long. quick. Exactly. Um, so you weren't living in Cavan there, were you? When you were with Bowes? Um, for the first part, I was. Um, I was travelling up and down every day, um, and then um, I ended up doing the ETB FAI ETB course in Cabra, mm. um, which I knew nothing about. Just someone again said, "Would you be interested in playing for us?" Didn't even know what it was about. Didn't know you could get. Who in. was uh, running it at that time? Was that Harry Kenny or Harry McHugh? Oh, Harry McHugh, uh, sorry. Yeah, um, in Cabra. So done that, and then obviously that gave me the option of education while playing, and then I was in digs then again in Dublin um, while playing for both, so it was all right, not too bad. Yeah, and then Dan, you'd come back and you said that was Ian Morris who was in touch with you about signing for Shells. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Uh, Shane, actually, Shane had got, um, gave me Ian's number, or gave me my number, and um, he sort of made that, uh, made Ian get in touch with me and stuff like that, so made that happen. Um, and, and that's when I, as I said, around the October, November time, I knew it was just really come back and focus on shells. And um, I hadn't really been paying much attention to the to the force division when I was when I was back at home. Like, um, but I knew with him coming in, with him coming in, and there was going to be you know a lot of new lads coming in and stuff. And, and the goal was obviously to get promoted, and um, and that was something that was something obviously that would would interest anyone. So. It was it was easy just coming back and, and settling in with shells. I just had more focus on that. So, and mm. lucky enough, lucky enough to sign back again for this year. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Now we've obviously gotten back round to the League of Ireland and shells and stuff. So you've come back to the self-proclaimed greatest league in the world. Um, you're yeah, playing one. in the first division. Like you're saying, you don't know a whole lot about it. It's obviously not doesn't get as much media coverage as the Premier Division would. 
Um, but still, a very, especially in the last, say, three, four years, it's been a very competitive league. Um, I would have played in it myself with Atlan and Cabinteely. Now, obviously, at the time, playing with Atlan, we were one of the bottom teams and it was tough. We were kind of getting getting whipped a few times. I remember playing um, in Tolka against Shells and losing 6-0 and Davey O'Sullivan scoring a hat-trick. So, not nice. Not no, nice. it's not. We've all it's, been there. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Davey being... Like, he's, was he? Did he finish as the top, if not one of the top scorers in first division history? So um, he would have been along for town, first team when I was at their 19s and would have seen him trying and play and knew exactly what he was like. And mm-hmm. you're just looking at him there, saying, I have to mark this fella for 90 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm saying, the fourth division is very competitive. Um, you have had the, the opportunity to play there. Obviously, you're saying, Colin, you come in as number two, and it was Dean Delaney, who another season, obviously season goalkeeper very good and a lot of experience who had started off as the number one but I think it was like two he's had conceded a couple of goals in your first two games I remember that Galway game and your man scored a goal from about 40 yards like um obviously you shipped a couple in the first two games and I know you're never like you're never celebrating stuff like that but are you kind of looking at that then being like right I think I might have a chance here if I train well um yeah look I think any player always thinks that if they're given the opportunity you know if they're training well and given the opportunity they'll take it but you know, I think we're grateful that we, we were able to come home. We have a league in our country that we're able to play in. And especially the first division, like you said, it doesn't get enough recognition, but it gives young players an opportunity mm. to grow up, mature, learn the game. And, and I think that kind of gave me that opportunity last year where I came home, I needed a bit of confidence. You know, I hadn't played the season before at Bowes. Mm. Um, and, you know, when these games were going on, the first couple of games, and we were losing goals and, and losing games, it's not nice for anyone in the change room. And it wasn't nice for, for Dino as well at the time. But, yeah. you know, again, I was given the opportunity to try and steady the ship at the time, to try and see mm. if I could do anything different that Dino couldn't or the lads or whatever, and um, to try and help the team out. And, and, and hopefully, well, luckily enough, we were able to get a couple of draws in there at the start. We we didn't, you know, go start winning games. We got a couple of draws and, yeah. and, kept, and kept the goals down. And then that gave the team momentum and, and that gave me, obviously, confidence as well. And, and, mm. and look, at, we went on to do what we we done last season. Yeah, and obviously, I know Dean is, well, he's gone 40 or something, isn't he? He's obviously, like, he's, he's kicked, kicked on a goal a fair bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he failed it anyways. But, like, he, like obviously, he'd never be happy to be kind of shipping goals and to be taken out of the team. But... What was he like then with you when you'd obviously gone in as number one and like was he what was his like relationship like with you as being the GKU and stuff like that and um, helping each other out? I listen, I think anybody I didn't know Dino before last season and anytime mm. anybody had spoke to or, or about Dino, like they're like what a guy, what a keeper. So um initially I had that respect straight away. Like, you know, he had my respect of what he's done in the league and throughout his career. But I think when I was given my opportunity, he kind of seen maybe a passing of the guard. He kinda knew that maybe his time had, had done, like he had been goalkeeper of the division the season before and I know he was obviously being club captain, he wanted to finish on getting the, the club promoted, which he did, mm. but I think he kind of recognised that, you know, maybe maybe he couldn't do what he did in his prime or mm. and, and, and he was there for me all the time. Any questions I had, any doubts I had in my mind, I could sit, bounce it off him during the week before Friday and he'd be like, no, no, this is what I think or, you know, maybe you're yeah. right, I'm wrong and and for someone like listen to, to be able to turn around to Dino, someone of his age and experience, and for asking him for tips and advice, you've just got to be like a sponge and take it. Like, yeah, you know. definitely. And I think it takes a certain type of person to be able to recognise that there's someone more up and coming that, like, for the good of the team, could probably do more and just take that little step back a bit and then more so guide you along the way. Absolutely. Sums him up as a captain and as a person, to be honest. Yeah. And now, Dan, obviously, um, I meant to mention this earlier, but you're a bit of a utility man. You've played a couple of positions, like I know you've done a few stints at centre mid, centre half, right full. Um, you're coming He'll into the next. Yeah. <laughs> I know Colly fancies himself as a centre half, but I've seen him, seen him playing a charity match before and I won't say no more. No, no, we hate that. Um, but you're coming, obviously, you're coming back across, you're coming into shells. Um, you don't really, like, not saying you don't know where you're going to be used, but obviously, like, if obviously Ian Morris has done his research on you, he knows that you're a very versatile player and can be used in a couple of places. But had you come home thinking, I want to play. I want to play as a centre mid, or is it a thing? I, I just want to play wherever I can get in. Um, it was the conversations I had had was you know all about midfield and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, I think we were sorted four four right backs at the time. We had Jr. and Ado, uh, the two lads in mm. there. So two good lads. Um, so the conversations that we had had was centre mid, and for me, preferably my my 
favorite position is centre mid. Um, and Vinny, Vinny, penalty manager said, you know, sometimes it doesn't stand good to you, but at the same time, all you want to do is play football. You know, you'd rather be on the pitch anywhere mm. than than be sitting on the bench or sitting in the stands. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you just have to take it, and you know, whatever, whatever, especially as a young lad as well, where whatever you're put, just just play and do your best mm. for the team and stuff like that. So. Uh, because it's all about game time, I suppose, uh, at a young age. Yeah, and then obviously for people that don't know or don't know much about the League of Ireland, the two lads obviously played big parts in Shells going and winning, winning the fourth division uh, last season and then are now obviously they're getting promoted and in the Premier, so top flight of Irish football, um, which is obviously fantastic considering the two years are coming home and you're more so just hoping for game time than nothing else and then you're going to win the league um, and going up to play in the top level is obviously where you want to be and where you should be. Um, I just want to talk about then. Obviously, you've mentioned it earlier. The thing you wanted to do was when you came back down was go back to education. And obviously, you got a bit of help with Jamie, who would have obviously gone touch with Ronan um, to mm-hmm. put plans in place. But what then for you, Colly? I know you played with balls and they trained obviously in the cage. Is that why then Blanche was the option? Yeah, for me, I. I- I wanted to stay in Dublin um, and I knew that the PLC could get me into technologies that couldn't get me into universities at the time <laughs> um, and obviously both trained that Blanche and me thinking that was going to be at Bose for 40 years um, <laughs> then I, I, I was thinking it, it, it'd, be, it'd be class to go straight across from, from economics straight over to the cage and train at six <laughs> but uh, no obviously look at you know it just happened out that Blanche was in you know in my mind and uh once I looked it up and had, you know, I had an interest in business and more so in accounting and finance, and they had the degree there. It just made it just made sense to kind of stay stay put, to be honest, and mm. you know, just continue on where I was. Yeah, because I remember obviously I've graduated in November, so I never got to play college football myself, Dan, but would have played a college mm. for my final year, mm. and we'd gone through a couple of keepers like kind of year on year, and going into that year, we're kind of looking for one. And you're hoping like that someone Still comes in, it. and like yeah, Jay Jay hasn't heard of anyone coming <laughs> in, and then this six foot six giant walks in and you're just counting your blessings oh, then that because yeah. that's the one now yourself you re, like there's a couple of positions where you you really need a top player in to some you can kind of you can get by but goalkeeper is definitely one of them um and then obviously last year we went on and won the fourth division in college football I think you have a habit of winning a few fourth divisions <laughs> and now we've been to the the premier of uh, premier division of college football this year and dan has come in and has uh, been first team captain this year as well um from playing, obviously, um, playing abroad, playing in Scotland, playing in England, and then even being on loans and stuff, you've done, you came on loan, played in the the, first, oh, the Premier Division with Bray. You're coming back and you're going to play football in college, obviously, you're on a scholarship and stuff. Um, more, I'm going to ask more to you, Dan Force, because you come straight into the Premier Division of college football. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised at all by the standard of teams? Um uh, well, just from conversations that I was, was having with Collie or Lance who played it, you know, it wasn't something to take lightly. Um, there's obviously some League of Ireland players who are in the college and some good Leinster Senior League players and stuff like that. So, or whatever, you know, if you're into Munster Senior League and mm. stuff like that. So, um, I, I was actually a little bit surprised with, with how good the standard was and stuff. Um, I wouldn't have been expecting it. Like, you went down to play Corinthians, is it, down the Cork? UCC. Yeah. UCC, yeah, mm. and like they're a, they're a club team down there, and they play, they play with soft park down there. Mm, so five minutes, I won't say yeah. more. Collie. <laughs> I didn't even want to mention the result, but you know, just just blame teams the keeper. Like, <laughs> teams, teams like that, you know, they do surprise you. And we played Warford as well. They they mm. reckon back against us, but even ourselves, you know, it was our first year together as, as a club mm. and first year in the, in the Premier Division, and I thought we we done well. You know, we got the yeah. Game. To the, to the second phase of it and stuff like that so yeah you got to cook quarterfinals yeah, and stuff it's, it's just stuff, stuff to build on for next year yeah. and stuff like that so and hopefully a new flock of good players this year that Jay can pull in mm. from yeah we've been we've been been very lucky obviously yeah. having Jay as the, the man yeah. with the contacts helps and he's yeah. obviously involved with Pats and now there's a lot of League of Ireland lads but we do get a few gems year on year that you don't know are coming in like we had Collie the year before that we had Rob Manley come in um, like I know we're talking about standards and the Premier Division uh, college teams are littered with League of Ireland players like ourselves. We have the two yeah. of you. Like I mentioned, Rob, who was the Fourth Division top scorer, player of the year, and everything else last year. And you've the likes of uh, Eric Abulu with Longford, Charlie Smith, new first years with UCD. Uh, it was with UCD 19, has gone to play with Wexford Forest team now. And then, like I are saying, top, a couple of top LSL uh, players. So it is really competitive. And I think that 
a lot of players, and me and Jamie obviously spoke about it in uh, the podcast I've done with him, that players can use it as a stepping stone to find new clubs or just to better themselves, to keep themselves playing in a good standard. If you're between clubs and stuff like that, it's a really good way to get into it. Um, the reason I asked you first, Dan, is because obviously Collie had come in. When you come in and played, it was the first division, and obviously without disrespecting it, it's not to the standard where the Premier is, which goes without yeah. saying. Um, but I'm sure it was a similar enough for yourself, Carly, that I'd say like, more so the, the standards of what we have in our own dressing room and Blanche probably would have surprised you a little bit. Yeah, I don't think I was blown away by the standard of college football, but what I was blown away by was how, especially, you know, yourself, the boys in Fortier, how seriously how he's serious, talking. Like, yeah. Because yeah, I, I was kind of expecting, it, okay, a grand on a scholarship, you know, it helped me, you know, mm. financially and with, with college and stuff. But when I came into the change room and I could... Man. I, exactly, I, you have a man coming out. <laughs> but but I, I could see how, how serious the lads took it, especially the boys who were in final year and they really wanted to win something, you know, they wanted to show something for the four years they had been there. And mm. I was kind of like, well, okay, well, you know, I've kind of got to be respectful to where I am, who I'm playing with and, and give it my all and, and, you know, treat it as I'm playing in front of 60,000 or, you mm. know what I mean? So, and, and look at, I think in any walk of life or in any time you're playing sport, if you win something, Nobody asks, you know, what level it was. They just want mm. to see the medal. And, you know, last year we won two medals between college and club. So, you yeah, know, you won't, go, good you, year. Won't go, exactly, you won't go every year winning that. So, look, it, it's a, it was a good year to start off. In. Yeah, definitely. And like we're saying, even you're going into clubs and um, signing for shells looking for game time and you might not be getting it straight away. But then you're saying you have, a, you have at least one match a week with college, which is yeah. if, you're playing, if you're playing full games like, you, like the two have been, that's 90 minutes a week. Mm-hmm. Albeit, like it won't be to the standard of the first division in the League of Ireland, or obviously not the Premier Division, but it's still minutes in the tank, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's players like yourselves that like are able to have that mindset that goes that will come in and I'm going to use it to the best of my intentions and get the most out of it that I can, and obviously to help the team as well. Um, and you'd mentioned a new crop of players this year, like we'd said in the one with Jamie. I think it was five of us that had uh, left. I think five graduated and one left mm-hmm. so you're, you're losing half a team half a star in 11 you know what I mean and it's very tough then straight off the back of a promotion to be going in losing half your team and then trying to get new players in and gel and stuff like that but like we said we, you've done very well under the circumstances getting to first, first and foremost securing your spot in the Premier for next year and getting the quarterfinals of the Cup in the league and obviously you're beaten by Carlo in the Cup who then went on to a final so it's not as if you're you're not getting beaten by the poor teams, you know what I mean? You're getting beaten by the teams that are getting the finals. Um, what I have then, just kind of we've covered a lot of stuff. Um, sticking with shells, obviously we have we're in this the middle of all this stuff now, the coronavirus, COVID nineteen, whatever you want to call it. Um, how are you as keeping ticking? Um, well, we you know the lads were given GPSs at the start to do their running while I was logging it on my Fitbit as best as I could. So. Obviously, during that, they were allowed to travel to, to Talkit to update their GPS and, and all mm. their stats. However, now, um, within the, the new lockdown and stuff, within the 2K, we have um, now an app on our phone that we're all able to map our runs and, and, and put it all together so we can all see that, you know, as a team, we're, we're sticking together. We're all doing mm. our runs. You know, it's not ideal, but we know we have a responsibility to the club and, and to ourselves and to everyone, the fans and stuff, I suppose. Yeah. That, we're keeping fit as best we can. We're being professional and, and, and listen, whenever this ends, hopefully we'll get back on the pitch as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, obviously, then you'd probably have the likes of the video calls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually doing one tonight in Zoom, Zoom class tonight. Is that here, a gym so. session, is it? Gym set, yeah. Uh, high intensity class. So, um, looking forward to that. <laughs> it's a, have you done one yet? Not, not together. As a, yeah, not as a team. But yeah, they're, they're a bit mad. With, yeah, with the, with the programme we were sent in. Um, we, we, had a, we had a few of them for this month, so I think it was good as well, the group chat, we had a WhatsApp group chat mm. and everyone was sending in, take pictures of their, of their run session on their watcher on the phone or whatever, yeah. so it was good for lads just to be doing that every day and I suppose the older lads making sure the younger lads are doing it and stuff yeah. like that, so yeah, it, gave, it gave everyone a sense of um, responsibility and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's seeing obviously Kyle your log and stuff and putting them on your story and Daniel going out and doing a bit of the misses as well. Yeah, yeah. So everyone she's everyone's benefiting. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's it's all you can Locked do right now, stuff. really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We'll come out now with hopefully a bit fitter and, and a bit of bacon as well. He's gonna be I'm gonna say Kyle has <laughs> yeah. been flat out bacon. Yeah. I I've been flat out bacon, which means I've had to do more running, so I think I'm gonna stop with the bacon. <laughs> yeah, it's seen uh, Rob Manley a copy jar. Yeah, it was yeah. it cookies or muffins? 
Yeah, oatmeal, uh, protein, chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. So I think he, went, I think they went down well with him as well. I've had a few now that are trying them. So um, yeah, look, if you want the recipe now, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. We'll have to get you on the story on the on the blind story to do a little, little uh, Gordon Ramsay job. Exactly, yeah. Chef McCabe. What about you, Dan? Is it you, I miss that does the cooking? Yeah, she does the cooking to be fair, and she's very good. Like every night, you know, she, she'll make a dinner. So, um, but it's a good balance. I do the washing up, she does the cooking. So yeah, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. I'm Happy a little sous chef. Anything she needs, I'll just yeah. Do. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, lads, that's everything I've wanted to cover, which is um, obviously is a, a, a very like interesting stories. And like I said, it's it's very similar but different at the same time. Going to do the same thing, but in different countries, different clubs. Coming back then to obviously play ball and ended up in the same league and the same team and now studying the same course in the same college <laughs> in different years. He wants it's to Col- be me. Has Collie helped you out? Calvin, man. Has he helped you out? Calvin, man. Don't worry, we'll take you down. We'll take you. He it. has actually, you know, some 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 of the accounting and the math stuff, but like that accounting, it's just a new language and I didn't know. I didn't really know. Like last thing I done was juniors here at maths and then yeah. coming in and doing maths with Colin McGuinness and not having a Yeah, I know Colin McGuinness. What I'm looking at, so um, but now yeah, in the library he's, he's helped me out with a few things. So um, anything, anything I, I have questions or anything, I just go to Collie with them. So now is it is it good information? Are you taking this it and then coming back, Collie, come back with D's and F's? No, Collie's got some good results last year. I think most mostly A's and B's and stuff like that. So Mo- model pro. Yeah, uh, we'll, yeah, definitely. We'll see in a few weeks' time how I get on this year. I think That's I, you... I'm doing I'm doing well now myself this year as well. So um, it's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. So happy. With so that. you have to keep the levels with to keep that scholarship. Definitely, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. It's in the fine print somewhere. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, uh, it's been great having you on. Thanks very much for giving us your time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Absolutely. Um, for everyone at yeah. home as well. Thanks for listening and thanks for coming to our tour talk. Cheers. Thanks, Dan. Yeah.